Alright, our next target that we need to check it out in basic instruction is all the triggers. B triggers, N triggers, R triggers, and F triggers. Let's start with P triggers. Let's put a contact, grab our PERT P trigger, and let's put a coil right in the end. Oop, and ooh, not meant to do that. And let's give him a uh, output uh, one. And this is gonna be our push button one. And in here, we need to give him some form of memory bit. So let's give him a memory bit one. In here, it's quite simple. And as soon as he receives a signal from push button uh, one coming through, it will detect that click and, and a positive edge, which is as soon as he sees the signal, he will send the pulse out on one cycle only. Then you have to let the button go to, to be able to execute it again. So let's have a look how that works. And there we are. So what we're going to do in here, we're going to quickly change that one to set so we can see the pulse itself. And there we go. So by as soon as he receives the signal, which comes from push button one, we, it will it take that as one uh, trigger. As you can see, and if I hold it and uh, let it go, it, you, it just only does it one per one pulse per cycle. So here we go. My set is on. So I'll show that again. There you go. So. There you go. It's, it's 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 quite similar to his predecessors, but you don't have to have a like a switch on top of it. it that that signal can come from any uh, switch that is away from the actual block. The simplest way I could possibly explain it. And the same thing would happen with the negative edge. So what we're gonna do in here, we're gonna change that one to a negative edge, and it's gonna be looking for a negative edge. So let's bomb that in, and by clicking a push button, as you can see, nothing's happening. Unless I let the push button go. As soon as I let it go, it detected the negative edge and our output 0.0, .0 is on. That's the B trigger and the N trigger. The last thing that we need to check out in basic instructions under bit logic operations is R trigger and F trigger. So let's check them out how they would work. So as you can see, it pops up the data block. And from there on, what you need to do is give it the signal to a CLK, where the signal will be coming from. So we're giving them a push button one, and where the signal output, where, where output is going to go. We're going to give a memory bit in here, and for us to be able to see what's happening, let's create another line in here with a, a memory bit one as a contact. And as we tested before, let's put a coil down here. And uh, set that as an output and change that to set. There we go. So let's load in. Have a look how that works. Let's click the button. And as you can see now, there was a quick chain exchange going on that happened in there. And the output Q0.0 is on. It received its pulse really, really fast. And it did its job. And if we go into a data block in here, you can see if I click the button, it changes the state for monitoring purposes. So now let's check out how the F trigger will work. Again, it's got his own data block as well. So from there on, we're going to again give it a push button. And get memory bit. Create our uh, memory bit in here, the uh, contact. And a uh, I'll put one and for the set. So let's, as you can see in here, once I'm going to click the button, it will change to true, but my S is still off. If I let it go, S goes on. Detected the negative edge and done each job. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is R trigger and F trigger. So the next one in our basic instructions that we are going to check out is a timer up. Operations. So the first one on our list is generate pulse. So let's have a look how that guy works. So as soon as you put a timer in, it will generate a uh, DB instance, so which is self-explanatory. It's going to be storing these values, the time values. In PT, this is where we put what time it needs to run. So we're going to put in our case, I'm going to put 10 S. S will stand for a second. By default, if you don't put anything, it will go on as MS, which is milliseconds. In my case, that's no good. So if you want a second, put the S. If you want a minute, put M. If you want hours, put a H. And obviously, so on. So I want 10 seconds. 
And for it to function properly, obviously, we need to uh, initiate a pulse. So a signal, some form of signal, it'll take that for one cycle only and carry on. So all it needs is a uh, signal to carry on. If the push button gets removed, the timer is still going to keep running until it runs out and stops. So as, as it receives the pulse, it goes in on state and activates the output. An output is required. If you don't put an output in the end in here, the timer will just freeze and it's just not going to do much anything else. So even thought here is going to allow you to load it in. Not sure why that is the case, but it is what it is. So let's put a coil in the end and make that as our output. So I haven't done that. So let's uh, compile it and load it in. Yeah, well, another thing we're going to do, we're going to open a DB block. So let's have a look. And that DB block, as you can see, we can we can see the time it's been set to run, and ET is the time that it uh, actually is uh, is at, at 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 that time you're looking at it. So it's basically querying the actual time. So you can see at the moment that is the, the set is 10 seconds, and you also also have the input state and output state. So let's go into our Block in here let's go into a online and let's click a start signal so as soon as i click push button as you can see the timer goes on and it runs the output is on and if you want to query what times it is going here we go you can see it all in here it tells you the state of or anything that is to do with that block and that legend is tp timer generate pulse Next one on our list is T on, which is generate on delay. Let's have a look how that works. Again, it's going to create this data block. So in here, again, it's going to require some form of signal. So let's let's set that up as our push button uh, one. And I'll say we're going to give him a three seconds time so you can observe what's going on. And as it's a uh, generate pulse, it requires its output. So let's give him an output and tell him that to be a, uh, that could be memory bit one. So here we go. And again, if you want, uh, we already understood that the, the PT and ET is where you can actually query what time has gone past. So let's uh, compile it and check how that works. Unlike generate pulse, this guy requires the push button to stay on unless uh, it's for him to carry on counting. So let's have a look. If I keep the button on, it will carry on counting until three seconds and activate the output. As soon as I let it go, he resets himself automatically. If I activate the push button and let it go before the time runs out, no output will be activated. That is time generate time on delay. Next up, let's have a look at generate off delay. Let's see how that works. Create a database, obviously, again, you guys got your data block. Let's give him a signal. Push button, give him a time of 3 seconds. 3S for our case, and give him an output. Which is, again, a memory bit 1. So what is uh, what this guy is going to do in here, like explanation here, it will generate an off delay. As soon as he receives a signal, it will go on. And as soon as the signal goes off, it will run its timer and will turn things off. So we turn it on, let it go, it runs out in time and turn it off as the run time runs out. Let's try it again. Receives this signal, runs for a certain time, whatever is set, and then it, delay, it generates a delay. That is T off, generate off delay.